Officials of the Ministry, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me, on behalf of, sorry, if I continue, one of our distinguished members, welcome the Honorable Ministers and all officials of the Ministry and its parastatals. Uh, like you must have seen in the letters sent to you, the essence of this meeting is to ensure that the Senate Committee on Solid Minerals, Mines and Steel Development and Metallurgy uh, gets to know precisely what the performance of the budget of the current year 2019 uh, is all about. Thereafter, we will delve into the defense of your proposals that has been put as the budget for the ministry. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have already known ourselves because uh, early last week we met and had an interactive session where we had an inkling into the operations of uh, various agencies under the ministry. Uh, this meeting would have been held much earlier, but because the minister had to accompany Mr. President to Russia and also give us certain collision of schedules in our uh, activities in the Senate, we felt this day would be most appropriate uh, for us to meet for these purposes of uh, performance and budget defense. Uh, as a matter of fact, this ministry holds a great deal of hope for Nigerians and we must give it its due. We must be interested, ask questions, give guides on what we think will be the greatest opportunity this country will have to bring into effect the so much desired diversification that we are all talking about. Uh, you do well to remember that in a lot of presentations by the government itself, our potential for petroleum or oil has a timeline to be exhausted. And any sensible administration would have to look inwards to find ways of sustaining the country. And from the data and facts that we have on ground, there is no doubt whatsoever that the mineral industry will come handy even now when we are over relying on petroleum resources. We believe if we are able to tap as much as we can into these potentials, uh, it will give the petroleum industry a run for its money. So it is with this idea in mind that I want us to look at how the performance of the budget of this year has been and what are we doing to ensure the full advantage of the budget we are making in the coming year so that we'll be able to exploit all the necessary potentials that this country has in the solid mineral industry. We also want to have an inkling into the takeaways of Mr. President's visit uh, to Russia. Incidentally, the minister himself is part and parcel of that committee. We would like to know because that will shape our focus uh, on mining generally and with particular reference to state development. I would like to uh, shorten my comments uh, because there are a lot to be said by uh, the minister in the defense and the performance. 
and thereafter we will call on the agencies under the ministry to one after the other uh, give this on a distinguished committee uh, the idea of their defense of 2019 budget and also their defense for 2020 budget. But before I invite the Honourable Minister to take the floor, uh, I would like to announce that one of our colleagues has a very pressing, uh, I may ask him to maybe say one or two words before he takes his leave. Uh, uh, my few comments is I was highly uh, uh, impressed with the statement the Honorable Minister made last time during the interaction where he said the sector will make its money from multinationals like Galeco, DBS and so on. I was impressed with that statement. My little contribution as a member is one. This committee is desirous of moving this ministry. Uh, most of you might not be able to initiate anything, but we can legislate here and push the ministry towards the uh, diversification that we have been talking of. Uh, I'm going to be very brief. It is high time this ministry move away from its regulatory status and take over the economy of this country. To do that, I expect the 2020 budget to carry the establishment of mining zones. Uh, when the minister mentioned Gelenko, they cannot come and operate in small CUs that are often... Like, you must provide a very big area for them to cover. Most of these reserves that have open leaks today can be used for mining. I am of the view that the ministry, after this budget session, should sit with this committee and move it away. We should have mining zones. Mining zones where infrastructure is provided. For example, I was in Nasarawa State. I crossed over a bridge that was built by Germans in the 1940s. I am sure the Solid Mineral Ministry did not build a single bridge. We must provide funds for mining infrastructure. No roads, no bridges, no electricity, no water. This should be provided. So the budget must move from this regulatory one that you put small money and it disappear within the ministry without anything to show. And the people like Glencoe will not come when we don't have mining infrastructure. So either way, it is up to the ministry to collaborate with us to move it forward. Two, the solid minerals support fund, like I suggested, it sh should be something that will add value to most of these minerals. That must also attract funding from the government. Then data. Anybody that wants to come and invest the first thing he will ask is that uh, the Geological Survey Agency doesn't have correct data that meets international standards on most of the minerals that is in this country. So funding must also be provided in that sector to have data that you can send to anybody in the U.S. to come and mine. And then three, the mining cadastral office doesn't even have a befitting office. It is too tight. It is too tight. It doesn't show an office that can handle it. There, there is congestion in that office. I was there, that is why I'm saying this. I was in the bush, that is why I'm saying there is no infrastructure. And I know Glencoe will not come if we don't have infrastructure. The Honorable Minister, you work with us, to provide funds for your ministry to start and you create mining zones where only mining take place. Here you run into farms, you run into communities and there are small CUs, 1,200 highest. You cannot bring such people. My chairman, I will stop here. I have said what I want to say. Thank you.
Robin Lisa. Thank you so much. Distinguished Chairman, Distinguished Vice Chairman, Distinguished Senators, who are members of this committee, we must also acknowledge the clerk of the committee, uh, and members of my team here. I say thank you for this opportunity this morning. I will start with an overview of our 2019 budget. The ministry and its agencies had an appropriation in the sum of 20 billion point one seven six naira total. It's broken down into 8.55 billion for personnel cost. 1.726 billion for overhead and 9.891 billion for capital. This sum is for the ministry and all its agencies. But particular to the ministry is a total sum of 6 billion 537 million 171,267 naira exactly. And this is broken down into 1 billion, 4 million, 757,000, 910 naira for personnel, 707 million, 937,312 for overhead, and the capital for the ministry alone for the year 2019 was appropriated at 4 billion. 764,476,045 naira only. Um, <clears throat> if you have the executive summary, I'm going to pick two of that. And here is a, how the budget has performed so far till date. On personnel, total appropriation for 2019, like I said, is about 1 billion with 4 million. Total release so far is 665 million. That amounts to 66.2% release. The expenditure on that is 92.24%. As of what is released, we have used 92.24%. Overhead, total appropriation for 2019 is 767 million. Releases so far for overhead is about 50.13% at 384 million. Percentage utilization is 93.84 of that amount. Capital appropriation for 2019 is 4,764,476,045 naira only. And um, thank God we got a release uh, within the last week of 40% of that, a capital release is coming uh, this late, at 1,905,790,418 naira exactly. And of course, because we just got it last week, nothing like it expended so far. But if you look at the total budget performance of the 6.537 billion appropriated for the ministry in 2019, Total release so far is 2.955 billion, which amounts to 45.22%. That's our budget performance so far this year. Achievements recorded in the year 2019. Uh, it's quite a long list, but I'll just paraphrase. The ministry facilitated industrial mineral development to promote self-sufficiency in production of uh, <coughs> materials locally. Some of these minerals include limestone, laterite, sand, clay, dolomite, shale, dimension stones, and all that. And I, I, I spoke about the successful story 
that I, I, I witnessed in the state, <clears throat> and that's the K, uh, CDK. They are the largest producer of tiles in the world, ceramic tiles, and the birth in the state about three, four years ago. Now the beauty and the pride of that is they export tiles to Europe, to America, and to the Orient, which bears manufactured, made in Nigeria, Ogun State. That's something to be proud of. We successfully conducted the second edition of the National Council of Mining and Mineral Resources Development in Kaduna. The first one was, uh, the first one was in Abuja, the second one in, in, in Kaduna, and the third one comes up next week uh, in Ekiti. Honorable distinguished members are invited to grace this occasion. It's, uh, we can send in formal uh, invitation to you, sir. The Ministry in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Finance developed the export guidelines for solid minerals. This is what guides people who have mined successfully and they want to export the products out of Nigeria so that uh, everybody knows what is due to each and everybody. So this will develop. This is 2019. We reinvigorated the Mine Surveillance Task Force through capacity building. We worked on the generation of integrated geoscience information in greenfield and brownfield exploration evaluation of gold, pegmatite, nickel, chromium, cobalt, rare half minerals, lead, zinc, silver, copper, barite, and iron ore sources in Nigeria under the NIME project. This, though the NIME project is not completed yet, but even the interim report is generating interest abroad. Working extensively with state governments and relevant stakeholders to formalize and manage artisanal miners into cooperatives and provision of extension services for these people, especially to manage their safety. The National Gold Policy, initiated by the Ministry, facilitated development of the value chain in gold. Now the CBN has agreed to be buying gold, to put some of the reserves in gold. And uh, we've guaranteed two refining licenses, one in Nogu State and one in Abuja here, to refine gold. And uh, CBN and others uh, can buy gold. We sponsored the second edition of African Gems and Jewelry Exhibition and Seminar, the second international conference on lead poisoning, with special focus on prevention that was jointly organized by the Ministry and um, Doctors Without Borders. Maintenance of the Ministry Integrated Automation, the web portal that we did. Addressing the nation's geological security, the ministry acquired and installed high-sensitive seismometers. Uh, I think this was um, premised on when we had tremors in Abuja or, and some area last time. So the ministry proactively purchased these meters so that in future we will not be caught unawares if there is any tremor or earthquake. Introduced the small-scale mining loan scheme in collaboration with Bank of Industry. This is the SFDF. Sustaining the Mineral Resources and Environmental Management Committee, Merenko in states. Stakeholder sensitization, research collaboration with tertiary institutions, production and hearing of documentary on television stations. The ministry participated in some of foreign uh, fora of mining. Carry out a comparative analysis of the mining roadmap of the ministry with African Mining Vision and proposed development of the country mining vision in collaboration with UNDP. NGSA generated more extensive geosciences data of the country and signed a memorandum of understanding with China Geological Survey to strengthen capacity in regional geochemical mapping of the country to help few mineral deposits. Updated national mineral database which attracts foreign and indigenous investors in the solid mineral sector. The electromagnetic survey data for three higher perspective gold and lead zinc zones have been acquired and are available for interested investors. Promote transparency, transparency in mineral titles by automation and upgrading of the MCO. 
office, MCO system, at the mining cadastral office, which ensures a seamless process for obtaining exploration license permit and approvals for willing and credible investors. Under the Mine Diver program, we have commenced the modalities for capacity building in community-based organizations and other community representatives, helping them participate in key decisions in mining operations and processes. Establishment of Donor Agency Committee for Multilateral Collaboration, Carry out a techno economic survey of resources and technologies for management and development. Produce the mining environmental regulation compliance handbook and guidelines. These are some of the achievements of the ministry. The challenges. Always on top of on top of the list of challenges, insufficient funding, stroke on timely release, direct intervention by states in the management of mineral resources, which is anomalous. Multiple taxation by states and local governments, inadequate geological data, limited supporting infrastructure. I think the Honorable uh, Distinguished Senator that left alluded to that. Insecurity of minefields, especially in Zamfara, Cardinal Plateau, and the Northeast. Illegal mining and community challenges. These are some of the challenges uh, the ministry faced in 2019. The revenue collected. We have uh, a table here to show trend. While our revenue may not be so much now, but since focus has come back to mining, the ministry has uh, always improved year on year. So 2015, 2 billion, and 2017, we peaked at 3.9 billion. And this year, uh, we are already at 3.7 billion as of September. We hope to uh, do better than 2017 which will be our best yet. Uh, on page 11, you have a graphical representation of what I've just read. Challenges encountered in revenue and generation initiatives to improve revenue. <coughs> Some of the challenges are inadequate geosciences data and information, activities of informal and artisanal miners, illegal trafficking and smuggling of minerals across porous borders, and insecurity in the minefields. Weak collaboration through synergy among MDAs that generate revenue. Unscrupulous activities on private operators. Interferences by states and local government in mining activities. And last but not the least, the multiple taxation. Some of the initiatives to improve revenue generation that the ministry came up with. Special Mine Surveillance Task Force. Automation of revenue collection in the headquarters. <coughs> Excuse me. Formalization <coughs> of artisanal miners. Integrated, automated, and interactive solid, solid mineral portal. Revenue optimization and verification project. The National Council of Mining and Mineral Resources Development. Revenue monitoring of state's mines office operation. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, sir. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for your presentation. Uh, before distinguished members make their comments, causing destructions in those areas, I have a specific case to talk about. In one of my local governments, there is a town called Bunkure. So, in Chinese, I am mining in those areas, and the mining place is very close to residential areas. I specifically wrote a letter to the ministry last year. Sorry, sir, distinguished senator. I know you, but maybe not all members of my team, sir. You missed out the introduction, sir. Okay. I am Senator Kabiruga, currently chairman of Committee on Heineck, uh, senator from Kano South. I have 16 local governments under my constituency. We have the largest constituency. <laughs> I'm equal to many states. It's I don't want to see my chairman state. <laughs> But I think I'm twice Bielsa State. Bielsa has eight local governments. So, so with 3.9 million people. So it's really a solid a state where it's really chopped out in terms of space. So I complained on the issue. My committee came to me, Mr. Chairman, complained on the issue of having some foreigners have more powers than the indigenous in Nigeria. And that there was legal money they complained. The community with the district and everybody complained to me. 
I Scott wrote a letter to the ministry. I was there myself twice to see the minister, then minister. And they told me they suspended the blasting and the when pool inquiries are sorted out. Unfortunately, after a while, the Chinese went back the blast. A lot of lives were lost in that location, even before I wrote my letter. Yet I'm surprised whether it's the ministry staff so that maybe will advise the minister at that time. But I'm worried and disturbed, and I hope minister and minister will say you will not fall in that kind of shoes. I think when we raise an observation, we're not in our own interest. We do make observations for the people. And that's why, by God's grace, I've been coming back. This is my 16th year in the Senate. So it shows that I'm working for my people and I have to fight for that. So really, I'm not happy with what happened in the ministry. And I'm going to foreshow that case with you, ministers, and see how that case will be resolved. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Proposed budget of 18 billion, 333 million, 167,000. 787 Naira only for the year 2020. This is separated into 9.180 billion for personal cost, 1.726 billion for overhead cost, and 7.416 billion for capital. The breakdown is as follows. For the ministry at the headquarters, the personnel is 1 billion and 58 million. Overhead proposed is 771 million. Total recurrence is 1.830 billion. Capital proposed for 2020 is 3.628 billion. Total for the ministry is 5.58 billion out of this. All the other agencies, Council of Nigerian Mining, Engineers and Geosciences, they have 87 point, so 87.793 million. NGSA has 2.685 billion. National Steel Raw Materials Exploration Agency in Kaduna, they have 1.336 billion. National Metallurgical Development Center in Jos has 1.02 billion. Metallurgical Training Institute in Unicha has 913 million. National or Iron Ore Mining Company in Etape, Niamco, they have 1.617 billion. Nigeria Institute of Mining and Geosciences in Joss, they have 527 million. Nigeria Mining Cadesta Office and Centers has 588 million. Ajakuta Steel Company Limited has 3.796 billion. And SMDF Office has 290 million. 3.335 million. Uh, that's the budget proposal. Um, do you want me to go ahead with the focus and all that stuff? The focus of the ministry for year 2020, top of our priority is to increase revenue generating capacity of the ministry, tighten security on the increasing and sophisticated activities of illegal miners, to the surveillance task force, increase Stroke enhance the relationship, stroke resolve the governance issues between the three arms of government, the host community, and other relevant stakeholders. To enter into more MOUs so as to increase the technical capacity of staff of the ministry in the efficient and effective discharge of their duties. To maintain the web portal project, to generate qualitative geological data and operate the mining geodata bank in order to attract foreign and indigenous investors to the sector. To research into clean to coal technology. The formalization and support of artisanal and small scale miners. Maintenance of modern air recording and archiving of mineral titles management, management system to ensure that all required data processed are transparent and efficiently managed. Stimulation and promotion of small scale metal enterprises. Facilitate I think the event has overtaken that. To further equip the mining implementation and strategy team to drive the effective execution of the roadmap. Deepen the financial services expertise and access to funds to drive sector 
to drive sector growth and drive the expansion of supporting infrastructure for mining. To establish a mining regulatory agency that will comprise the existing mining cadastral office, the mines inspectorate, artisanal and small scale mining and mines environmental compliance department as contained in the approved roadmap. This new agency coming on board will have the full independence and powers to effectively regulate the industry in a much more transparent and efficient manner in keeping with global best practices. Work with the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, the Nigerian Stock Exchange and others to assemble a minimum of $600 million investment fund for the sector, which we hope to conclude and operationalize within a reasonable time. Continue with the substantive World Bank Support Program, that's the main diver project, which will be part of an overall mechanism through which the initiative of the roadmap are expected to be realized. Encourage private sector participation in the establishment of mineral buying centers. Uh, these are focus for 2019. Well, the chairman will permit, so that I could just, uh, in one go, I could tell you about uh, uh, what happened while we were in Russia for the African, Russian African summit. Or do you think I should defer that, sir? Well, um, before we left the country, I had the privilege of briefing Mr. President on what our focus should be, uh, uh, especially from the ministry, their perspective from the ministry. And on Ajakuta particularly, we had serious legal entanglement uh, from previous agreements, let me just say, from previous agreements that the ministry or agencies of federal government had entered with certain individuals or corporate bodies. So there are a series of legal entanglements, whether a case is in court or is in arbitration somewhere. But all these entanglements was just meant for one purpose, that's to deprive us from producing steel. So my advice, uh, humble advice to Mr. President was that we should go ahead and the request of uh, the Russian government on a government-to-government -government basis to come and complete Ajakuta. And uh, I'm glad to say that uh, all the requests that Mr. President presented there were questioned. Uh, they accepted a proposal on a government-to-government -government basis for Ajakuta and go to Russia at the bilateral. Uh, President Putin himself mentioned the name of the company uh, that the Russian government will bank uh, to come and uh, complete Ajakuta. And uh, it's such that they will come and complete the Okuta and run it for a while. The running essentially is to get our pe people uh, familiarized with the uh, process again. The people that were trained in the 70s, in the 80s, uh, most of them have uh, retired or they've left the service. So all this will happen on a number of years that we agreed. What we are signing now is just the MOU, which is just broad outline. But detailed agreements will be signed as to number of years, as to cost. But the beauty of it is that Ajakuta has been faced to start production uh, from imported billets while the blast on it is being completed. So that we could start and start any money from Ajakuta uh, and then the process goes on within the uh, maximum of 24 months, the promise, that we can have uh, the blast on it working and Ajakuta will be working fully. Uh, before we left Russia, uh, Sushi, we drafted an MOU, but because the government-to-government -government, uh, arrangement, this MOU had to go through the protocols. We had to send it through the Foreign Affairs Ministry. But we jump-started that by giving it to the embassy in Russia, with a note verbal, it was sent to the uh, Russian Foreign Ministry. From there, it would go to the uh, appropriate ministry. Uh, we met the minister, Minister Manturov, as the name of the man, who will now uh, look at the MOU that we've drafted, look, do all that is necessary uh, on their own side, send it back to us with amendments or what, whatever is necessary. And when we both agree on the MOU, it will be signed. We're looking at January. Uh, hopefully, this will take place. Either it will come over or I will go back over there. When the MOU is signed, then the contractors can move in. We can have detailed agreements and they are to proceed with the, pro with the uh, processes that are already outlined. The first stage is to start production first in those units that are ready, and then of course while the main uh, plant itself is being completed. And that's as far as uh, Ajakuta is concerned. We, all go we were also able to sign 
an MOU uh, with Ross Geo. Ross Geo is a, is a uh, government-owned company, but commercialized, something like our own NFPC. So they were able to go straight, because it's a commercialized company, they were able to go into uh, MOU with us. We signed an MOU with them. And what they're coming to do is to help in the mapping uh, uh, of uh, minerals in Nigeria. This will be funded by Afrizim Bank. There was, it was a tripartite thing, so Afrizim Bank was also there. We've signed this MOU. Uh, we need to go into details with them so that it can come and just help us. Uh, we're saying inadequate data. <coughs> this is also to help in that direction so that we can have uh, a data on, on everything that we have in Nigeria. Basically, these are the two that concerns the ministry that we're able to do uh, there. Of course, uh, the issue of the court of Basi, which of course been prior, privatized, it was also discussed, but uh, that's actually a, a private Russian company, uh, UC Rusa, and that was the Mr. Prime President promised that uh, that would be fully resolved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable. The Russian visit and the possibility of a Jakuta coming on board. Um, uh, let me take a look at um, your page four when you were doing a briefing about uh, the performance of 2019, which uh, is from 2018, knowing that uh, you just received 40% uh, of the, the capital that is meant for this year, and it means you are yet to even deploy the funds. Uh, my comment would be on the uh, that page four on the extension services to artisanal and small scale miners. Uh, as someone that uh, comes from a state that uh, you have many of them on ground, I think this is a welcome development. And to follow it up with the introduction of the concessionary loan of five percent at uh, interest. Uh, for the same category of the artisanal uh, miners. Uh, it's a welcome development again. Except you said that there is difficulty in having them to access that, uh, the, the loan that um, you have, uh, the ministry has facilitated. Uh, having started a good work, I think you will go ahead and ensure that um, you ease the process by the necessary intervention uh, with the, uh, the appropriate uh, financial uh, institution so that we can have these artisanal uh, miners actively engaged and properly regulated by your ministry. Uh, I look at page 7, number 22, where you want to uh, ensure that uh, you promote transparency in mineral titles administration. I think that is important because of the instances of duplication of uh, licenses for the same, uh, what do you call it, is it a cata cadastral um, yes. mining area? Uh, in Plateau State, we've had cases that have led to near crisis situation and uh, legal battles and all sorts of <coughs> intervention by the state to ensure that uh, there was no breakdown of law and order as a result of this uh, duplication or conflict of um, uh, issuance of these certificates. I've taken a look at your revenue profile uh, at page 10, and this revenue profile in view of uh, the hope that uh, you are to be the next cash a cow of the country. Um, we hope that uh, something would be done to show up um, with your presence in that ministry. Uh, let us uh, hope that this year, or the, uh, by the year 2020, that we will begin to see some more activity that will roll in some more uh, funds into the Federation account. Uh, be that as it may, I want to say you've already done a great job for us by taking on all the other agencies that are under you. I've uh, taken a look at um, the budget of uh, 
a metrological center in Jaws and the mining geosciences. And I would uh, request that um, in the subsequent budget that you, um, I think that is that number eight, that geosciences is about the least of the budget there so that we can get to increase their own portion. And of course that of the entire ministry as well because there's a lot to be done. And I will agree and advocate strongly that uh, there's need to give some more uh, uh, resources so that you can do for the country what we need for you to do. Thank you, distinguished chair. And, uh, the three points on these zones have been to this level, to this level. And we intend from this year to go further to this level and then to the other level. So that even if we are inviting foreign people to partner with us, even though this may be in your office, which I know your data has captured them, but we here, we don't have this. In this kind of presentation, somebody like me will expect to see in southwest zone, this is what we have here, this is what we have here, and our geological department is trying to come up with more distance here. In the north central, we have this here, we have this here. At this level, the geological department are coming up with refined data to upgrade or update this. And sometimes you see our revenue go like 3.8. It is done because at this zone, we were all up. There were some hitches due to certain factors. For instance, noticed, we all know, there are factors that will make you not to explore what is in Belugri. Uh, but we have these same items of minerals in Medugri. For instance, I'm from a boy state where we know every village has one mineral or the other in a boy. But if I'm looking at this, I wouldn't find my state as part of the mineral states. I want to tell you that Kalago has the highest cement raw materials, like 10 times more than what you have in uh, Abajana. You know, but all these things are silent. And the governor has been able to do all concrete rules to some of these areas we do. He equally has invited Chinese people to start exploring a kind of raw mineral that is used for uh, pencil production and solar energy panels. So these are the, and every village in Ibo has chippings, granites, and gold. We called Julius Bega to do one road one time. They discovered the mineral and kept Minister of State may bear me witness. They then kept exploring that place without even license, without reference to your ministry. So these things are the areas so that we can checkmate and know that this data is there and this is where we are going and we're able to go this way. Secondly, mentioning that my state is one of the highest, not just small. <laughs> mineral, I'm telling you so much in my place. Even oil is there. Boxer, the dynamite is there, everything you can think of in Nepal. So I'm also saying we need to establish mining institutes in Nepal state. <laughs> so that it will help. It will help to explore this. I'm not joking, serious. Minister of State is my living witness. Thirdly, Mr. Minister. I'm with you, sir. I'm just your minute. budget is not suggesting to me that this is the second <laughs> revenue earning <laughs> ministry. We cannot achieve it with 18 billion, I have to say the truth. You cannot, because when you are coming with 18 billion and we are saying it's going to compete with oil, I don't understand where it's going to. When oil, one block is talking of billion dollars. Uh, Mr. Minister, we need to revisit this budget. <laughs> so I'm serious about this. So, if we are talking of this ministry to be oil chasing ministry, we have to be serious. Fourthly, we need to also create a department in this ministry that should also be a commercial chasing department, like NMPC is a commercial chasing department of oil ministry. So, one department here too should be exploring some of these minerals. We we'll use it as a yardstick to compare with those illegal miners. And from there, we'll be projecting our revenue. We can establish it, and we can, if it requires amending the law of this ministry, amend it, it will be the commercial department of 
Solid Mineral and Metallurgy Department. I think I raised my case, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Has taken or is taking the right steps. From the minister's presentation, I can see that uh, the ministry has understood the role that it is expected to play. I would uh, just add that uh, indeed the involvement of all stakeholders in the business is very, very critical. When we talk about uh, illegal miners, they are not uh, uh, angels that come from nowhere. And uh, if you involve the various uh, stakeholders, state governments, local governments, the communities, then I believe it will go a long way in checkmating the illegal uh, activities in the sector. Uh, I will also say that uh, I like your uh, proposal to involve the private sector in packaging a fund, $600 million investment fund, and uh, I think it is the way to go, and uh, it is something that I support. And uh, finally, you also uh, propose to establish an agency, a mining regulatory agency. And I think I can uh, speak for my chairman, and I can say that uh, we, uh, in the National Assembly, will give you all the cooperation you require to make this happen. So we look forward to receiving the deal from you so that we can work on it. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I want to commend the Honorable Ministers for giving out this proposal. This is a project that for long we have been looking forward to the survival of a Yakuta Steel Company. We are so sad when it was proposed, auctioned out, or sold out, or leased out to an Indian company. We cry badly with even blood coming out of our eyes. This is really sad. <laughs> but now that President Bahari is bold enough to do this, I commend you, Minister, I commend Mr. President Bahari, uh, that the Ajakuta sales should come up. I also appeal to you that let's start ways of producing flat sheets. I think that will give us more way into more development than just producing IROs. I think we're building up of Abuja <laughs> and we need to produce more of the to or other factors that we can even be, at the end of the day, be able to produce our own vehicles. That's number one. Number two, I also want to appreciate your initiatives that, or the agents which my colleagues have spoken, that you are establishing these agencies to make sure that these mining uh, are being regulated. I think also the illegal miners, who you call the illegal miners, are Nigerians mining in a way to survive. When there is no facilities to make this thing really work, then I'm sure the other people have to survive. So find a way in which these people can be integrated into the system and find of charging them revenues and then going to remove them out of that area. I'm sure most of the problems we have in Zambra State is part of this. Uh, uh, unemployment and people want to go into illegal mining to survive. So find a way out. I think you have this proposal, which I, I believe that this proposal you put are very good and will support you at any length. And I also want to agree with my colleague that 18 billion is not even a smiling face for you to even work hard to get more funds or revenue for the government. I think uh, solid minerals should be the next easing for survive for producing our budget and improving our infrastructure. So see how best way you could and find a way which you can integrate the illegal miners and be able to see more of the community than the foreign miners or foreign uh, companies that are blasted rocks in these areas. Thank you very much and we are proud of your presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, you have raised so much hope for us in this industry and I indeed all Nigerians out there but I shudder to say that uh, unless this hope uh, will, will 
evaporate, we need to be a little more pragmatic. Uh, my colleague, before he left, he made some observations, and I very much agree with him. And one thing I will emphasize is that uh, actual development of the mining resources of the country must be government driven. For the simple fact that very cherished, very lucrative natural resources are guarded jealously by every government. So also this country. Look at the history of the petroleum potentials and its exploitation in the country from 1950 uh, something to, to date. Uh, since the Oloibri experience. Daily the government is investing sometimes in infrastructure development of the industry. I can see no escape by government as far as this industry is concerned. Government must take the bull by the horn either by creating mining zones or take the template of the NNPC. Because most of the names you find in this, uh, with due respect, uh, the subsidiaries of the ministries, to a lot of laymen, there are things that they don't even know where they are. The only thing that will make them practicable, appreciated, and, and useful to them is to see how you use those agencies to practicalize what the agencies are supposed to do. The NMPC is daily embarking on exploration. In my home state of Nasarawa, the Minister of Petroleum Resources is spending billions in explorative activities. Only last week, or two weeks ago, uh, everybody jubilated this country with the discovery of oil in Bauchi. So I see no reason why our budget should not be tailored in such a way that we will create some of these desks, some of these outfits that will make government drive the process of exploration and to some extent exploitation with some partners in, case, in, in, in areas where uh, it is specialized. So I would like to see that part of the capital expenditure for this year's budget to have some kind of attention into ways and means of providing infrastructure in this sector so that it can provide a platform for private miners to launch on for the country to progress and generate the revenue with so much desire. So, infrastructure development, funding, and also provision of expertise. Government can in so on use its embassies across the globe to find the best experts in the kind of minerals we so desire to exploit. And government can hire them. The ministry can have a department of exp uh, experts who will come and do the exploration, do everything on behalf of private or individual miners. Because some of these exploration, uh, exploratory activities are so capital intensive that only the Angotes of this world can afford to do that. Uh, so that is as far as having an enduring infrastructure in this sector so that we'll be able to reap the benefit many years to come. When oil was struck in 1955 in a library, we didn't start getting the benefit until after 20, 30 years. This is the case I want to make for the Minister of Solid Minerals. Uh, secondly, sorry, uh, uh, someone was talking about outfits. The petroleum industry has, the Minister of Petroleum Resources has a department called Department of uh, uh, DPR. Petroleum, uh, petroleum Resources. I want to see one for 
the Swahili minerals also that can go deep into finding how our potentials have been exploited. Uh, the issue of Ajakuta, I would like to grab the indulgence of my colleagues that given the legal encumbrances at the moment and uh, have not yet had our harmonization meeting with the House of Representatives, I would like that on this issue, let's wait until the time we would have executive session with the members of the House of uh, Representatives, with the ministers and those involved, that we can talk deeply, heart to heart, as some of the issues are classified, uh, not for public consumption. Um, when I look at the breakdown of the budget, it baffles me when I, I see a very promising outfit that the government has created to help artisanal miners yeah. and other small-scale miners be left as uh, an outfit that is... Oh Nobody knows what it's doing. If 168 million would be voted for a uh, solid mineral development fund for this year, uh, I wonder that, what... That's a capital vote. Capital? That's a capital vote, sir. 168 million? Yes, sir. Even we can provide that for them. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll appreciate that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I'm talking with every sense of seriousness because... Like I said the other time, you find that the country has stopped, has blocked our borders against uh, uh, infiltration, against smuggling, and the farmers are laughing to their banks. I believe if we resuscitate, if we encourage this sector through the, uh, the, the Mineral Development Fund, where we invite artisanal miners and small-scale farmers, and pump enough resources like it is being done in the uh, Minister of Agri or in the sector of agriculture, believe me, you would find that the mineral development and job creation and wealth creation that this platform will provide will be as much as, if not better, than what the intervention in agriculture is in the country. Because there's no state in this federation that doesn't have one solid mineral or another. I want the minister to take this very seriously because this is what will bring along people that are craving and aching for a living without getting anything to take home. When they have, when they are sitting on, on gold, when they are sitting on land, uh, on, 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 on gold, on, 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 on treasures, on wealth. Finally, uh, during our uh, plenary session, the Senate has directed us to interface with you and other stakeholders to find ways of ameliorating the problems uh, brought about by environmental and uh, ecological degradation. Uh, I would want to know how much far the ministry is voting to ensure that this ecological and environmental problem are sorted out. This will also include states that have paid their dues in terms of mining, like Plateau. Go to Plateau now. A lot of people are dying in abandoned uh, pits. I feel the ministry should take responsibility for finding ways and means of replenishing or mitigating some of this degradation that has been subjected to Allah's due to uh, activities of mining. I thank you. I think with this, uh, the Honourable Minister, you can take, you can, you can respond to all our questions and uh, I, I think we will make problems. All the ceramic industry and tiles that the next country that supply but not up to Nigeria is Turkey. 
my question is, if your ministry is aware of this uh, a large commercial export of our sand to Italy. The questions are many, some overlap, so I'll try my best to do justice to them. Uh, and when we talk of infrastructure in mining, uh, I think that's uh, Senator Adam before he left, it's like a case of chicken and egg. Which comes first? Infrastructure costs a lot of money. And I can understand if the deserved respect is not accorded or recognition is not yet accorded to mining in Nigeria. And that's because uh, we get 18 billion budgets. Why you said one block is one billion dollars in oil. Uh, I think the country is just coming to the realization that mining uh, could be the next destination for us. And as such, it's a gradual process. Uh, I think we're learning to work. Eventually, we'll start to run. And I can tell you, that run will be a marathon. There's something that uh, I, the World Bank discussed with me, the World Bank people, when they came during the mining week. It's called Power of the Mines. It's actually authored by somebody, and uh, the guy promised to send a book to me. And that is what the ministry is doing already. Encouraging miners. Don't let's forget that we don't have proper mining in Nigeria yet. And that's why we say about 95% or even more of mining that takes place in Nigeria is artisanal miner, mining. Because this is all they're after is subsistence living. They just get something, sell it, and then make a living out of that. Then they go on to do, repeat that process all over again. While when we have proper mining, they're going to build facilities and they now have corporate responsibility to their neighborhoods. And this is some of the things that they have to submit as part of their plans, uh, mining plans, you know, like building schools, offering scholarship, uh, providing power, because if you're going to build a mine, a mine itself, proper mining, you need a lot of power and all that. So often, the mines, they have to generate power for themselves, whether through gas, diesel, whatever. So, in most cases, they extend this power to the neighboring areas, to their host communities. And this is what they call power of the mine. So, the infrastructure will come as mining develops in Nigeria. Uh, we must also acknowledge the fact that the federal government tried in this uh, instance. If you look at Ajaokuta, uh, Itakwe, and the Alaja still in worry, a dedicated rail line was built. This is infrastructure. was built for that purpose to move things up and down. From Atakwe, it was supposed to get iron ore to Ajakuta and get it to Alaja. So a, a rail line was built for that. This rail line, which of course has been taken over by the Ministry of Transportation, is being extended. It's been upgraded and extended. Uh, there's a 38 kilometer from uh, Alaja to the Wari port, which of course they are looking at to develop. Also, they are taking it from uh, Ajakuta up to Abuja. Because they also want to carry personnel on this. So it's not going to just be goods, it will be goods and personnel on this line. And this line itself is already forming a major infrastructure for that mining zone that we're talking about. Because there's a lot of activity going on around the <coughs> middle there, Nasarawa, uh, Benue, Plateau, and all that. If the real line is to come on board, is completed, it will be easy for the mines and the activity taking place in this area to feed into it. It's a vertical line going from Wari Airport and then going up all the way to Abuja. That will cover a lot of mining activity that's going on in that zone. Also, uh, this is an initiative of Nexum Bank. There's something called C-Link. They are bringing in barges. Uh, these barges will ply the River Niger from the delta upwards. It's dedicated to mining. This is also part of infrastructure. These are flat bottom barges that will carry products up and down, uh, maybe raw, whatever equipment that's needed is moved up River Niger. They're going to dredge. This is something we've given them the go ahead. Uh, we've done our own part, and this should come on stream very soon. So, infrastructure has been developed. But to say you want to go out and do all infrastructure in the zones and all that, that will cost trillions, the money the, the country does not have. So, I think, like I said, chicken and egg, we have to manage as we go along. 
as mining develops and more money comes in, I'm sure more will be given back to mining to develop infrastructure. Um, and I think what Senator Adamuda also spoke about funding for NGSA. NGSA. Uh, we're doing a lot in that. Um, the intervention fund that was given the last time is helping to provide a lot of information through the NIME project uh, in NGSA. So there's a lot of data that's being gathered from this. Also, the MOU that we signed with Russia, with Rosgeo, is also towards the same thing, to provide information, data, bankable data uh, in Nigeria. So we're doing a lot in this, uh, in this regard. And before he even said it, uh, said it's been to the MCO's office that is too tight. Yes, the space physically uh, is becoming too small for them. But we've already agreed to establish uh, regional offices for uh, the mining cadastral office so that people who want to come there, who are interested in mining and have to come from Interland, they have to come all the way to Abuja. Uh, we're looking at a situation where they just go to the nearest regional base to them and, of course, get information. But be beyond that, uh, they're, they're being digitalized. There's automation that's going on for MCO. So you don't even have to come to Abuja. You don't have to leave your home. You, you log on to a portal, uh, go through some protocols. You may have to pay a little fee, and then you can access information. You can now apply uh, for licenses, uh, for anything you want to do online. So we're in the process of this. And when this comes on, it will, there be, it will, there will not be a matter of oh, whether you have 100 offices or not. Because right from the comfort of your bedroom, uh, you can access them and then do whatever business you want to do with them. Foreigners mining illegally. That, that, there's a lot of that. And uh, I don't want us to dwell too much on that because we are not national television. But we, the, the, you see, there's no way a foreigner will come into the country and start mining without active collusion. Uh, I think the one I was talking about, uh, the, uh, I think it was uh, Senator Gaia that talk, uh, spoke about that, uh, the quarries. So if you, I think we'll go further on that case. But because I'm coming also from a state system, there is often this case where when projects are given to these people, I don't want to mention it national now, when they give them a very road construction project, often these people are given licenses to go and mine granite. Because, of course, you use a lot of granite when you're doing uh, civil works. There will be uh, concrete gutters, there may be bridges, and of course you have to use a lot of... Uh, uh, apart from that, there's a lot of uh, uh, stone that goes into the uh, asphalt making. So, in most cases, these people are doing these quarries illegally. Because there's no way a license will be given for a quarry where it's next to a community that people are living in. I don't think the ministry will ever make that mistake. But we'll look into this and then, of course, we'll resolve it, sir. Because then, we all know they use explosives in, in a quarry. So there's no way you're going to have communities living next to a quarry. Of course, it will damage their buildings. It might even cause uh, accidents and, of course, uh, cost life. But we'll look into that. Uh, external services and loans. Uh, to ease the process, I think it was also to ease the process for our people to have access to the loan. We tend to confuse uh, the fund itself with the loans. Uh, the fund is, is actually the body that is set up to get money. You know, the hard states, there are sources of funding where they can get money. And then giving loans is another thing. It's one of the things that they can do. Uh, at times they outsource this. And what everybody is talking about uh, currently is what has been outsourced to the bank of industry. Uh, a sum of 2.5 billion was given to the bank of industry and they are supposed to have their own 2.5 billion to make 5 billion. That money is supposed to is meant for the artisanal miners and small scale miners. Uh, not very much has been deployed from that, yes, because of some stringent conditions. But at the same time, what is afraid that this money just doesn't go away. Uh, this supposed 5 billion won't take one hour if you just want to give it freely. But we are trying to organize these people into cooperatives so that there's a recourse. If somebody fails, there's somebody to hold. But if you just say you want to give every Atsana miner or everybody that claims to be an Atsana miner money, say give them a, a soft loan at 5%, they'll take the money and go away. And there's no way, there's nobody you can hold. Because if you start asking them to bring uh, collateral, they won't have it. So we are ha trying to establish a system where the cooperative can stand as guarantors for their members. 
and then you extend the facility to certain members, if they pay back, other members will get it. It's something, uh, money is something that we need to handle carefully. I've, talk, I've spoken about the MCO automation. Um, of course, I've said it, the revenue in the ministry, we need to learn uh, to work before we can run. Uh, our revenue is increasing gradually. But I think as more attention is paid to, uh, to mining in Nigeria, we'll get there. When the big miners come up, then we'll get there. Somebody suggested for us just to go beyond royalty and copy what they do in the NMPC. <coughs> NMPC going to JVs. But see, JV means you have to have money because there will be cash calls. If you go into joint ventures with big miners and they're going to exploit something and say, look, we need uh, $250 million to do this. Everybody has to contribute according to their equity. That is something that uh, we're not sure we're there yet, that the ministry can contribute that kind of money uh, by asking the country to go to jail. But something we can look at in the future as we learn, uh, as we have more money. Uh, of course, the budget for JOS is small. That's the, the school in JOS. Um, uh, of course, everybody's complaining of not enough money. If we can get more, uh, we welcome it. Money by zones and analysis. Uh, I wrote that down. Actually, mining is done according to interest. We have a, what we call mining map of Nigeria. When people come to my office, there are important visitors, uh, courtesy of uh, Dr. Galva there. There's something we present to them, you know, mining map of Nigeria. That tells you superficially what you can find in every nook and cranny of Nigeria. Yeah, and all that. Uh, so we're not going to say do mining according to zones. Mining is done by interest. So if somebody comes and says he's looking for gold, you won't tell him to go to a bond when there's no gold. You know, yes, you have to point him to where there's gold. But if the man is interested in, oh, what you have, of course, we point him to the best place. Please go to a bond and go and do that. So mining is more by interest rather than by zones. Um, and I think, uh, distinguished senator, sir, <laughs> you've uh, indicted and given us good evidence against your governor. <laughs> Which by, inviting, in by inviting the Chinese to come and be mining, it's beyond uh, uh, the mandate of the state. Mining, as it were, is on the exclusive list in the Constitution of Nigeria. Yeah. So, by any state governor doing this uh, is actually committing some illegality. Uh, we are constantly uh, working uh, with the governors and the governments of the state to explain uh, this to them. Uh, if everybody were to take the law into their hands, and I keep saying this, the River State government should take over all the oil wells, and then the FAC distribution will dry up. So please, we need to realize that this is a common wealth. So, <laughs> so it's, it's a common wealth, and we should allow the federal government to exploit it. And there is 13 percent derivation for the states. Furthermore. States are encouraged to go into joint ventures. They are encouraged to go into joint ventures and, and form companies that can do mining. But the state itself cannot be doing mining or giving out licenses to Chinese or any other person. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody is talking about low, uh, low budgets. We we'll appreciate more. But we look to extra budgetary funding, which has, uh, has been given uh, once now. We are looking to source more from that fund the Natural Resource Development Fund, uh, the ministry got $30 billion from that fund in uh, 2018, which was caused by geared to all specific. And that's what of, it was out of that that the NIMEA project comes up, which is, of course, the promising thing the result is coming on. So we can look at extra budgetary funds, because when the budget itself, the state of intention, if you look at this year, we say our budget performance is 40 something. So even if we increase this budget to $100 billion, we're not sure we're getting uh, uh, funding for uh, full funding for that. Creating an arm that's... Um, well, I don't think for now we should go into being, uh, from being a regulator into being active uh, uh, players. It will confuse our roles and confuse investors because as government, we'll have uh, better information or uh, we'll be able to control security more and then we'll compete in them with our investors. We will not encourage investors to come. And I think just like NMPC has uh, DPR, which is uh, a regulator, uh, that's what we're trying to establish as well. This super agency we're talking about, where it's a one-stop shop 
you have MCO there, you have uh, um, the environmental people, you have mine inspectorate, all in one location. Then we'll be able to do, they'll be able to speak to each other and then regulate the industry better. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We don't want to be a player, at least not now. Involvement of all stakeholders is what we do all the time. Uh, we're constantly engaging the governors and we've written a memo which we hope to take in November with the uh, Council of State. <coughs> Raising funds from various sources, I said this, yes. Uh, SMDF, the act itself states how they will get funds. Uh, the funds are supposed to be built to about 200 billion or 250 billion. I don't think they have anything close to that yet. It's when they have a, the big cake that has been baked that they can now begin to intervene so much. Right now, all we are talking about is the 2.5 billion that has been given to a bank uh, <coughs> that we use. But they themselves, the fund, needs to have more money uh, so that they can do that. Of course, uh, we commend uh, President Muhammad Ubuari uh, for what we achieved uh, in Russia. Production of flat sheets, yes. We're going to start with what we, uh, we can do now. Before we can do flat sheets, we must have uh, liquid steel. And of course, it's something that, by the grace of God, before the uh, uh, expiration of the tenor of this, uh, this second uh, term, we should be able to do that in Ajayakuta, God willing. Um, Artisanal miners to be incorporated, we are doing that. Budget is too small. Uh, I've spoken about uh, uh, infrastructure, exploitation and uh, exploration by the Ministry, of course, uh, we shouldn't go there yet. I've spoken about the SMD of budgets, uh, and that budget I will see there uh, that the Chairman spoke about is actually meant for their own consumption. It's not meant for what they disburse. Uh, maybe they just want to buy furniture or computers, that's what that is meant for, the 168 million. So it's not the kind of fund that they can use uh, to do what they are meant for. Environmental degradation and uh, ecological problems. Uh, part of our budget every year incorporates that. That's uh, reclaiming old mines and all that. And there are quite a number that have been done successfully. But it's a cost-intensive uh, thing. So depends on what we get in the budget. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you might look into that. Uh, and uh, we'll select these mines and, of course, we'll reinstate them. But some have been done successfully uh, on, this, uh, on this note. Furthermore, uh, when the, the licenses are being given out and the mining plan, there's always a plan for recovery by the miners. So when we have large mining entities, of course, this is easy to monitor. But when they are senior miners, they're gone in the night. You know? so, uh, that, but the ministry is trying its best to make sure that we cover up. Well, the large commercial exports to Italy are people... Uh, we found that out, as, not even just Italy, and like I said, I don't want to be mentioning nationals. Some of uh, these rare earth minerals are being cutted out, and people think it's just wasted uh, soil. It's like, okay, go and help us throw the sand away. No, people, the people are extracting what is good out of it. Uh, we're trying to cop this as well. Um, the, po the borders are porous in Nigeria, as we are working on this. But please note that I told you all the success story. The biggest tile manufacturer has come to Nigeria because of the abundance of this material. They are in, in Shagamu in Ogun State. And when you see their boxes in Europe, say manufactured in Nigeria, Shagamu Ogun State. So it's a, uh, something to be proud of. Thank you. Okay. Sir? I just want to make uh, a suggestion, sir, that uh, in view of the Minister's uh, detailed presentation, and the budget of the agency, of all ministry and agencies, just about 18 billion. And all of us agreed that the figure is low. I think we can oh, yes, in order of us, uh, about the ministry, I want to assure you that members of this committee are passionate about this ministry and the potential that this ministry holds for the country. Uh, we will support you. We will cooperate with you, with all your agencies, at all times, that you see the necessity for us to legislate on things that kind of put a, a, a block against certain initiatives that you intend to provide. We are always available. You can uh, present whatever uh, amendments, whatever lacunas you have found in the operations that will require legislation. Uh, secondly, we are going to meet with the House Committee on Solimers and uh, State Development so that we can tidy up uh, the budget. 
uh, for presentation to the plenary. Uh, between now and then, if there are things that you think uh, requires to be uh, uh, considered, please uh, do well to, to, to come over. Uh, before we do the, the harmonization, yes. not 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 minding or notwithstanding the fact that there is the envelope uh, system, yours is a special agency that we want to prove to Nigerians that this agency or this department or this ministry has great potentials and hope for our country. We will do what we can. I know, Mr. President, is very passionate about uh, this. Uh, industry. That's why he's always talking about diversification. And his trip to Russia is also a thing to prove beyond any doubt that this country is on a path to uh, acquiring or accessing the best out of uh, this, this industry. Uh, I think with this I would uh, say to my colleagues uh, we have come to the end of this session, and uh, with your permission, Matt, the machine has closed. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, the senator is passionate about his state, but there is no, con uh, no state in this country that does not have large quantities of whatever you are talking about. So every state has something in mind, and I, I think I addressed that question. It is now based on interest. Somebody is looking for gold, you don't send him to a boy. There's gold in uh, Oshun, there's gold in Zamfara. You send them to the right place. If they are looking for iron ore, Kogi is the best place to send them to. So, if you are looking for coal, of course, we'll send it to Enugu. So, it depends on interest. People come in, investors come in, they have their interest, this is what we are uh, after, and all that. We'll send them to wherever it is. But what I, I said there, and we maintain, is that it's a federal government issue. Uh, so whenever uh, there's interest, I think they should channel it properly through the federal government. Thank you. Is the uh, ministry going to investigate that issue that the uh, state governor invited uh, Chinese company? Well, we are dealing with, it's not so much investigation because this is something that's in the open. And like I said, uh, the, owner, uh, the distinguished senator more or less provided uh, more evidence to what we've known. Because this is what is going on, and I think I mentioned during the interactive that some state gov uh, governments, don't let me mention governors now, are doing that. Uh, we're interacting with them just to say that, look, uh, let's do it the proper way and everybody makes money out of it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.